Today we're joined with Laurie from the Martial Arts Age YouTube channel. You're very welcome, Laurie. Thank you so much, Fred. Uh, it's, it's, it's an honor to have you on. And Absolutely. if you'd just like to give the audience a little background and to your martial arts. And Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm, I started martial arts in 1984. I was, I was, I was beat up <laughs> and uh, uh, my, my stepdad pulled me aside and he said, you know, do you want to let this happen again? And I said, no, no sir. And mm -hmm. So he started showing me Bruce Lee yeah. and oh, that was my first love and passion with the martial arts is, is falling in love with that. And really it was loving motion. And yeah. uh, I was blessed enough to be able to, to work with some amazing people and, and uh, I've been doing it ever since. So literally I've, I'm, I'm, that's all I know is martial arts, all I know. So. Excellent. And which martial arts did you start off with? Was Good question. So I started off in Taekwondo. Taekwondo. Yeah. Uh, it was very popular, especially in the United States in the yeah. early 80s. Um, I'm aging myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, it was, you know, it was, it was great. Uh, lots of fun, but it was lots of holes, lots of yeah. gap. And so uh, from Taekwondo, I ended up moving into a uh, Japanese Kempo and then started in my my judo and judo is my passion i love love judo yeah. and uh, got involved in goju shori uh karate which i'm now the head of the goju shori system and cool. um and now uh i'm in brazilian jiu-jitsu i'm a purple belt under uh professor george fuji um which is a carlos machado affiliate so excellent i love judo myself and the uh, system I actually learned was actually one of the founders of it in the 60s it was actually a uh, judoka, so it was a very heavily influenced oh, 30 yeah. years now. And look, uh, even now, my daughter, she's learned our system, but she started to do judo and she's saying, coming home and saying it's the exact same thing. <laughs> it's, but uh, have you ever competed in judo or karate over the years? Uh, I, I I used to be a big competitor in, in the in the karate circuit. So in the in the NASCA and then uh, Pro Mac, uh, one of the, the the founders of the Pro Mac uh, Professional Martial Arts Conference, um, uh, Toby Ruth is uh, one of my students, and so he got me back into competition. He's also promoters of uh, the Battle of Atlanta, which is one of the biggest martial arts tournaments in in the in the states. So it's awesome. And have you had any influence from boxing? I noticed from your YouTube yeah. channel there's a lot of boxing kind of influence through your channel. It's absolutely, you know, boxing. Um, you you look at some of the the, the uh, best martial artists. You know, Bruce Lee, for instance, uh, amazing boxer, uh, striker. Uh, and I I think that the more uh, striking arts that you study the more you really kind of realize that a lot of them, the stand up, the hand movements are all taken from, from boxing. You look at the greats, like Muhammad Ali, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. I mean, just a phenomenal, and today's greats, you know, Mayweather, uh, phenomenal uh, strikers, boxers. There's so much, um, so much strategy that goes into it that is, yeah. you can't help but fall in love with it. And I have always, always have loved boxing. Uh, and add it in because, you know, the tr traditional karate, you know, back this reverse punch, you know, it's, it's great. It works for the karate game, yeah. but striking self-defense. I mean, it, you just always go back to your, your jab cross. I mean, it's just, you know, yeah. go back to boxing. Uh, the basics are always very important. If you, if, sure. it's, if you, if you get the fundamentals down, you'll, you'll go a long way with it now. So absolutely. But, um, what do you feel the benefits of training in martial arts are? Oh my gosh. Uh, you know, our channel, we always say, you know, we get the edge in life through martial arts. Yeah. Really it's, uh, there, there's a difference between, uh, you know, somebody who's just practicing uh, you know, something for, I don't know, physical benefits, you know, going to the gym, working out. It, it's the same, but when you're focusing on martial arts, you're, you're kind of, interweaving all the aspects of life into your practice you know your focus your mental clarity your moving meditation uh you know it's not always sitting down in peace and quiet sometimes just moving doing kata is uh is a meditation it's it's stress relieving it's the physical activity it's the development of fine motor skills and the cognitive uh you know um uh, it sparks 
you know, the mental clarity that I think every, everybody wants in their daily life. And it yeah. teaches you the patience that you need to have to be able to deal, especially with today's crazy society. Yeah. You know, everything going on in the world is absolutely mm -hmm. insane. And uh, I think it, it ultimately brings balance uh, to, you know, the chaos and allows you to, to have the tools to be able to deal with that. So, Excellent. I was talking about the, the situation at the, at the moment now with the whole pandemic. One of the things I've noticed a lot from martial artists is their adaptability. Yes. Now, I know there's been a lot of gyms and a lot of fitness instructors and different sort of fitness-based arenas kind of thing that have struggled to kind of keep business going. Where I've noticed martial artists adapted very quickly and kind of took online and yes it was, it was like overnight there was a thousand new youtube channels teaching technique oh, yeah. it was <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> yes. but uh it's great to see the adaptability there and the the hard work going on to actually like as i was saying earlier with technology it's like it's completely new to me but <laughs> just taking it on putting the work in and learning it and adapting for the current situation it's it's unbelievable how much martial artists have taken that on you're doing a great job your channel is a great great channel i really enjoyed it i was watching all the and all the interviews this morning i, I just i love it you're just doing a great job so, oh, thank you Nate. Yeah. and uh what do you feel you've gotten life from training in martial arts uh it has given me a life i mean literally i feed my family through martial arts i um, I teach my kids the lessons that I learned when I was a kid through martial arts. And, uh, you know, one of the, the things that I, I kind of live my life by is that if you can go to bed at night knowing that you helped somebody else, uh, yeah. that day well spent, that you've improved the lives of the people around you. I think that is the call of the martial arts. Uh, and th there's people that train it just for them. But th the hidden truth is that even though if you're training just for you, you are an example to somebody else. And so you may not even know the people that you're leading. You may not know the people that you're inspiring. Uh, and that's, you know, kind of what I take from the martial arts is that I, I, I take the responsibility, the charge that mm -hmm. those who have went before us who have passed on to us uh, to continue on to make sure that we're setting the example for our future and our, our kids moving forward. So, Excellent. And as you said, you started in Taekwondo way back in the early yeah. 80s. And uh, due to of bullying, basically, or getting into a, a scuffle with someone, do you think your reasons for starting martial arts has changed over the years? And how has your martial arts progressed as you've got older? Um, you know, honestly, you know, I, I, I don't have the story that a lot of, you know, old school martial artists have, or it's like, I, I fought every day at school. No, 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 literally, I was walking home from school and a girl beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> She took my toy and she broke it and it was horrible. And like, like I said, it was, it was like preschool or something the school was right behind our apartment building. And, and uh, so it, the, the surface was, I didn't want to get beat up again, but honestly what it was, it, it helped me speak up for myself. It helped me learn how to use my voice instead of using my fists. Uh, it, it helped me um, to, to get a better grip on, on one, my anger. Cause you know, when I was a kid, I had anger issues. Yeah. Uh, and that's, it's just, it's so beneficial. My, my training has evolved. Um, like I said, martial arts has really kind of teach me to love movement. Yeah. I love teaching kids because you know, it's like you watch a child go from completely un uncoordinated, not sure and unconfident and then you you see them get something, a technique, a kick, a punch, or, you know, a kata. And all of a sudden, they're like, their confidence goes through the roof. And you watch their technical ability skyrocket. And that's like, so the student, which was me, has now evolved into, I want to share that passion and love with as many people as I can. And now with the COVID, you know, pandemic going on, it's, it's really with technology this has opened up an entire world of students of people who might not know the martial arts. Yeah. And it's, you know, like I said, it, as, with me as, a, as, as with so many other amazing martial artists, uh, a lot of which you've had on your show that we, we've now taken upon ourselves to, to really share our love for what we do uh, with the world. So. 
Excellent. And what advice would you give a young student starting out on their journey now? <laughs> Don't quit. <laughs> Don't quit. Don't quit. It's tough. Oh, you know, it was tough. If uh, I, okay, I, I should I shouldn't say don't quit. I've quit several times. I've just always come back. To it. Uh, I've had I've surrounded myself with people uh, when I was younger. It was my parents, um, but with teachers, with fellow students, friends. That anytime I'm like, you know, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. And they kick mm -hmm. me in the butt and they say, "What are you doing? Come on, you're good at this stuff. You, you dedicate. You said you were going to do it." Now you do it. So surround yourself with people that are going to lift you up. You know, if, if they're either pushing your needle forward or they're holding you back. So if you surround yourself with those people, you'll be all right. So. Definitely. I've quit so many times in my life as well now. Is yeah. I started with boxing, quit that, started kickboxing. And then, like yourself, I was very angry when I was younger. So a lot of fights. And things like that. And uh, I came to the part of school where I was either going to be thrown out of school mm. or I had to get my act together. And there was a science teacher that actually run a jiu-jitsu class after school in the evenings. So I was roped on there and humbled very quickly. Yes. And since then on, that's just been a, a totally different mindset towards yeah. martial arts. Jiu-jitsu so, uh, does that. Oh my gosh. I don't know how many times I've been in, in, in just a good role and... I'm thinking, oh, yeah, here I am, big, bad, black belt. I get in there rolling with a, a blue belt uh, girl that's this, this tall, and she's, like, tying me up in a knot. And it's really humbling, yeah. you know, to, and I, I, I love those moments in martial arts, so. Definitely. And you have the YouTube up and going now, but what inspired you to start YouTube and kind of move your business in that direction? Uh, so I still have both my schools. I have two schools in Middle Tennessee. It's called Family First Martial Arts. And Family First. Um, and so they're, they're going on. I have an amazing, absolutely amazing staff. This is part of the Surround Yourself with Good People. Amazing yep. staff that they run the schools. Uh, I, you know, kind of teach and instruct and guide them. Um, I started the YouTube channel for a couple of reasons. One, obviously with COVID going on, um, I wanted to to help more people uh, with people being stuck at home. I wanted them to be able to have little bite-sized bits of lessons that they could then, you know, practice and train. Yeah. Um, but the main reason why I did it was for my kids. Uh, you know, I I have been doing this all my life, and just within the last couple of years, I've I've realized, oh wow, my body's not moving the way it used to, and you know, my knees are shot. You know, that's the old judo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just, I, I've beat myself up for the last 40 years. And, you know, I, uh, I, I, I want to get as much of what's in here, you know, out here. And so that way, when my kids are older, they can be like, hey, this is my dad. And when, they're, when they have kids, they're like, ah, oh, check this out. This is, this is my grandpa. Hey, check this out. This is my great grandpa. And so on and so on. I want to yeah. build a legacy. Uh, and then even when I'm gone, when, you know, God takes me home, uh, hopefully people will be able to find some videos of this goofy guy in some weird pajamas yeah. <laughs> doing some stuff that they can learn from too. So. That's it. Uh, kids can be a big influence now. I know when I started my channel, it was actually my teenage daughter pointed out the first five or six interviews were all guys. <laughs> and uh, then she pointed out, she goes, could you name 10 female martial artists on YouTube? Oh, and I couldn't name five and it's just pointed out an issue to me kind of thing and I went and searched then and I think back in August I done a female wire week where I just interviewed yes. different, different female martial artists every day but it's kind of really opened my eyes it's something I didn't notice that there wasn't a lot out there but it's it's great that kids can pick up on these things and actually influence adults and I think it's always important to learn from even your students Absolutely. Keep that beginner's mindset. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's amazing the lessons that kids teach us. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we think, we think that we're the ones teaching them, and then most of the time they're the ones that are teaching us. Uh, the, 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 deep, the deep impact ones, the, the ones that hit like a, you know, a thousand-pound brick. And, uh, you know, it's, it's cool. There's a lot of amazing female martial artists. My wife, she's, she's an amazing martial artist. She's a fifth degree in taekwondo. Uh, matter of fact, that's how we met. She beat me up. 
<laughs> Always away now. I've been trying to get my wife into martial arts for 15 years and it's just, it's not happening. I've given up now at this point, but it's, I always find females are more technical fighters now. Oh, yeah. I think a lot of guys would rely on strength as they kind of get up and it's not until they're kind of progressing down their journey a bit, it's, they kind of start to rely on technique a bit more. Whereas females from day one, it's technique. They haven't got as much strength to kind of use. Absolutely. I've so heard so, so proficient in jujitsu. You know, a lot of female jujitsu uh, artists are just um, absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, so but my wife's also a purple belt in, in the Machado system. So, Excellent. So <laughs> you've, you've trained in a lot of martial arts over the years. Is there any you haven't trained in that you would love to give a go and add to you? <laughs> tai Chi, definitely. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... Um, uh, I would love to train in as many arts as I possibly can. Uh, Aikido, um, Kendo, uh, just, just amazing stuff. And, you know, the... the kidding me wants to go back to kyokushin you know karate yeah. <laughs> you know can i take it can i do it you know I, I just i love i love the history that comes along with it i love with the the philosophies that it teaches the yeah. lessons that that are just just layer upon layer upon layer it's just it's just so so fun i'm just like a kid in a kid store so. <laughs> yeah masoyama definitely did not make kokushin easy it's <laughs> That is tough training. That's yes, yes. I look at you know uh, some of the amazing martial artists that have come out of that. You know, George, mm. George St. Pierre. He's Kyokushin, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah I think so. Now, yeah. Oh, <laughs> he, he's a living hero. Love that guy. So, oh, great stuff. Uh, I know. Well, when we started martial arts, now the Karate Kid and things yeah. like that were big, and now you've got the Rise of Cobra Kai series. But uh, would you find yourself more? In the Miyagi-Do camp or the Cobra Kai camp? Oh, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I grew up and had my had my whole foundation shocked because then I started thinking that you know, Johnny was the good guy. And I was like, wait a second. Huh. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how life changes your perspective on things. You know, yeah. when I first saw Karate Kid, I was like, oh, yeah, Daniel was the good guy and Johnny was the jerk. And now I'm like, well, Johnny's still a jerk, but. It was kind of right in a lot of those things. I would say I align myself more with the, uh, probably the Miyagi-Do. Miyagi-Do. And would you have a favorite character from the original trilogy? The original trilogy? Yeah. Uh, Miyagi. Miyagi. <laughs> I love that guy. Uh, you know, one, he didn't have to, but he was a servant. And that's, yeah. that was, I think... Uh, you look at the lessons. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, karate, a lot of martial arts, we have these these things that uh, we do without really thinking about them. You know, like yeah. our belts, our uniforms, you know, the, the, the commercialization of, you know, what we do as a, as a profession. And Miyagi kind of stripped all that. He was like, listen, your belt doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what rank you are. A rank, you know, to walk around with your thumbs inside your belt saying, oh, oh I'm here to do that. <laughs> you know, it's like, that doesn't mean anything. <clears throat> what matters is that you were at the party before anybody else and that now you are in charge of helping the people that are coming after you. And that's it. Uh, and so that's why I like, I like Miyagi. Definitely. Yeah. I was always a fan of Mike Barnes, but. Yes. Yeah. My view has actually changed at him, similar to Johnny now. It was, I think when I was younger and I watched the movies, he was he was the bad guy. He was kind of... But uh, I watched the film recently again. Uh -huh. And I was looking, I was sort of thinking, was he really the bad guy or was he just so disciplined and determined that he was going to succeed and yeah. kind of push through it? Like when you watch back and take that mindset, it could be... It could put a whole new view on it coming yeah. on the Cobra Kai series if, he, if Sean Keenan is as back then which hopefully is but yeah definitely 
I think it's cool too. You, you, it's like I said, life is an amazing teacher and that the perspective that we kind of had back then is, is changed now when we go back and look at it because of our life experience. Right. Yeah. And it's amazing how uh, taking that as something as simple as Cobra Kai, you know, a, a show on Netflix or is it on, is it, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, it just makes you think of how many times in life we kind of are so set in our opinions and just changing a little bit of perspective or with a little bit of life experience, we can have a completely different one. And it helps you become more accepting of other people's opinions. Definitely, definitely. And finally, where can people get in touch with you online, Larry, and find out more about your martial arts? And... Uh, right now, online, I'm on YouTube, which is the Martial Arts Edge with yeah. the Martial Arts Edge. Uh, so youtube.com forward slash the Martial Arts Edge. That's just me doing my lessons. And then other than that, you can just look up my name on Facebook and Instagram and I'm, I'm, I'm there. So. No problem. I'll put links to everything in the description. Thank and you. it was an honor to have you on. And oh, wow. that is easy. Thank you. Thank you so very um, much for taking the time and chatting. Perfect. And we've got another Miyagi-Do fan on the...